Welcome back to PACU Nursing Minutes. I am Nurse Kathy, and today we are going to talk about rigors in the PACU post-op. So come along with me as we chill out our patient. Rigors is the involuntary shivering that occurs with anesthesia when the patients vasodilate and lose heat and drop their core temperature. And it can be as triggered as easily as dropping just a tenth to two tenths of a degree below their normal core temp. Mild hypothermia is triggered by the anesthetic gases or with a spinal or the environment of it being cold. So with our enhanced recovery guidelines, we recommend pre-warming in the pre-op phase and then maintaining normothermia in the intra-op phase and resuming to a normothermic temperature and maintaining normothermia in the post-op phase. The temperature regulation center of the brain is the hypothalamus. And this is where your core temperature set point is set. And most people will begin shivering somewhere around 36.5, 36.4. And again, this is all controlled by the hypothalamus and the autonomic nervous system. And so our body wants to maintain normothermia. And we have a very complex feedback system with the autonomic nervous system to maintain that. And our body will begin to shunt our blood away from our periphery and back to our core to maintain normothermia. Um, so again, vasoconstriction, tachycardia, shivering, um, increase in blood pressure um, with that shivering, all our body's ways to generate heat by increasing the production of heat in our cells to raise our core temperature. If you work in the pack, you absolutely have seen rigors and you know how disturbing this can be for a patient when they are sitting there and they're shaking uncontrollably, uh, they're awake. So we want to just reassure them that this is a common complication post-op and we will quickly get it under control and resolved. If it's really bothering them, there are some treatment modalities that we can do that will quickly reset that hypothalamic set point and stop the shivering. We have a shivering assessment scale. Many of you have this in your documentation. So I recommend that you do document their level of shivering upon arrival to pack you. So zero is none. One is mild shivering around their neck, goosebumps, picular erection, uh, mild EKG artifact that you may notice. Um, when you put your hand over their jaw, you may feel a little quivering. And this micro shivering, you can't see it sometimes, but you can feel it. So I highly recommend to just put your hand on their jaw and just feel and see if they're, you know, very micro shivering. And then moderate shivering is their chest and their jaw, and you can actually see that shivering. And then full severe shivering is the arms and the legs are going involuntarily. So we have zero, one, two, and three for your level of shivering on the bedside shivering assessment scale. And to give you a little back history on this scale, the scale was developed by the nurses at Columbia Hospital when they were implementing their therapeutic hypothermia after cardiac arrest. And um, now with targeted temperature management um, and implementation of that therapy, this shivering assessment scale has been adopted nationally. So rigors, how do we treat rigors? Well, surface rewarming is the easiest way um, to address it. And what you're doing is you are trying to trick the thermoreceptors that are on your, um, your, your skin. So you have many thermoreceptors that are on your hands, your face, and your feet. So if you can wrap the patient's head and neck and upper trunk and arms in warm blankets, sometimes that alone will stop the shivering because you're tricking those thermoreceptors into thinking that they're warmer than, um, than what they are. Preheating your bear huggers and having that ready set on high warm IV fluids so that you are maintaining normothermia and not causing further drop in their core temperature. The shivering is self-limited. If the warm blankets and the bear hugger and the IV fluids don't do it, then you can go to Demerol. And how Demerol works is it works 
on the hypothalamus, resetting that set point. So let's say they shiver at 36.5. When you give that 12 and a half milligrams of Demerol, what it does is it drops the set point in the hypothalamus now down to like maybe 36. And you'll see immediately within minutes of giving the Demerol that their shivering resolves. So again, I always go with the surface rewarming first, but then if the patient is really disturbed by it, and, um, and it doesn't seem like the bear hugger is working and they're really rigoring, I'll go right for the Demerol. Um, you do need to remember though, that they have liver failure, Demerol is not recommended. Our hands recovery after surgery, they address normothermia and the guidelines are pre-warming all surgical patients. 37 is the goal. Um, you hang warm IV fluids in the pre-op phase and then also in the intra-op and the post-op phase. Uh, maintaining normothermia. Uh, in the OR, esophageal core temperature is recommended. Uh, warming of the anesthesia gases in the circuit is recommended to maintain normothermia. And then if they're going to do any large irrigation of their wounds, like an open exploratory lap or anything that had been ruptured where they need to clean everything out, those fluids need to be warmed for the irrigants. And then in the post-op phase, we are going to do uh, normothermia maintenance in the recovery phase. These are my references, and I hope this helps you handle one of the common complications that we see in the recovery room, which is rigors. Don't be fearful of it. Just reassure your patients that we will get this under control. It's common and not to worry. It will go away shortly. Once you wrap them up in warm blankets, they know that they're getting good care. Thank you for tuning in to PACU Nursing Minutes. I'm Nurse Kathy. If the content that I am giving you adds value to your practice, please subscribe and share and like and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you're doing. Thanks for tuning in to Packy Nursing Minutes.